Hi, I'm WTOP Entertainment Editor Jason Fraley, and I'm here with the cast of A Christmas Carol at Ford's Theater. Uh, guys, why don't you introduce yourself? First, we have Scrooge over here on the right. Hi, I'm Craig Wallace, and I'm Ebenezer Scrooge. And I'm Gregory Mayhew, and I play young Ebenezer Scrooge and his nephew, Fred. Two roles. Two roles. Um, and uh, it's at Ford's Theater now through December 35th. Right? 31st? 31st. Yeah. 31st, yeah. December 31st. All December. Um, guys, thanks so much for joining us. This is awesome. Um, I've seen it a couple times there. It's sort of an annual tradition, and we usually have, uh, it was Edward Giro did it many years and coming here. So, welcome. It's awesome to have uh, a fresh face doing Thank this, you. doing Scrooge. Thank you. Thank you. Um, have you ever played the role anywhere else, or is this first time dabbling with Scrooge? This is my first time playing Scrooge. I have been in Christmas Carol a couple of times before. Okay. In what other roles? I played uh, the ghost of Jacob Marley, ah. and I played the ghost of Christmas Past. Okay, so you got a little practice there. Eh? I'm on the other side of the, <laughs> the mortal realm. <laughs> sure. How's it been playing Scrooge here? How do you prepare for this one? It's great. Um, I'm having a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, we have several new cast members, but the, the core cast members have been very supportive. And uh, it's a whirlwind. Uh, uh, I'm basically being plugged into uh, Ed's role. And Ed is a great friend and a mentor of mine. Oh, so, so you guys go um, back. You yes, go we do. Oh, okay, yes, cool. we do. Uh, so it's been a whirlwind, but I'm finally owning it, I think. <laughs> and I think people are enjoying it, and I think we're going to have a good time. That's awesome. Okay, and how about you, sir? You've, I believe you, you, you look really familiar. I think I've seen you on stage here. Oh, plenty yeah. of years. oh that's right, yes. Yeah. This is my sixth year with the production. It's okay. my fourth year um, playing the, the roles that I play currently. <clears throat> but... Uh, it's actually, it's been a lot of fun this year because we have had a lot of new faces in the cast. We have eight new adult cast members this year, which is more, I think, than we've ever had in the past. Nice. And it's really afforded us some opportunities to try some new things and, and play in ways that we haven't before. So. Awesome. What do you think? I think this is the 35th year, not, se not sequential, but 35 years that Fords has been doing this. Why do you think audiences are still, you know, they come back every year? And how do you, how do you keep it fresh? Well, I think people love Christmas, and I think people <laughs> love the spirit of Christmas, and I think people love the lesson of redemption and of charity uh, and of compassion. Uh, and as far as keeping it fresh, I'm new, so <laughs> <laughs> perhaps, perhaps Say Greg, no more. Greg can address that. Um, Say no more. It's fresh for me because I indeed love Christmas, and this is new for me, so every time I go into it, it's an opportunity for me to get it right. <laughs> I love Christmas. I, 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 I think I challenge you on, on our love for Christmas here. I think there's a lot of love for Christmas. Here. <laughs> I love it. It's my favorite time of year. Um, awesome. Now, I know a lot of people um, if, a lot of people are familiar with the show itself and, and the play, but what Ford's is, the cool thing you guys do is it's, it's got a little uh, music in it. Explain sort of that angle to it. It does. It's, it's got a lot of um, traditional songs from, from the time period, and they all it has this amazing uh, orchestration that's all instruments that would have been played in the 1850s, so you get a real taste of sort of the, the feel of the time, and, and, and you get to hear a bunch of wonderfully sung great carols as well. Yeah. What are, give me some of them, because I know, and a lot of them, they're sprinkled throughout the whole show, too. Well, we sing, you know, things like Joy to the World, um, uh, you know, of course, at the end of the show, we wish everyone a Merry Christmas as well. Um, the Holly and the Ivy. Uh, but what then we also, is this? yeah, what child is uh, this? We also have some great uh, songs that sort of have a different. God rest you, merry gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. Bleak, uh, in the bleak midwinter, which is my personal favorite of the show. Um, awesome, yeah. cool. And who are some of the co-stars? Who plays Marley in this one? His name is James Conchet, okay. and he's also a veteran. Of the production. Okay, cool. How many years was he in? Oh, I think at least three or four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he is just excellent. He's really a powerhouse out there. Explain how, I know that's a big highlight every year, but explain if many, maybe our listeners haven't gone to this one, how the introduction of Marley with the chains and the, the, the lights, and it's a little spooky because you guys play up the fact that it's a ghost story here. So, how do you actually do the sort of supernatural elements in this production? Well, without giving anything away. You can't spoil it, but yeah, tease let's it a little. Just say that, um, Marley has been haunting Scrooge, uh, especially on Christmas Eve. And Marley pays him a visit in his bedroom. <laughs> and they sort of have it out. Uh, really, uh, Marley's telling Scrooge what's what, and Scrooge is sort of cowering and saying, okay, <laughs> you're a ghost and I trust you. Um, but, but we don't want to give away the effects, but okay. it's, it's very, very compelling. It's so much fun to do. Uh, and it's spooky. It's very spooky. Yeah. 
So there are some special effects at play, some lighting. Yes. Oh, there's there. some really cool stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. During the scene. See, you just got to come to see it. Yes. You know? yeah. we, yes. We're not going to tell you everything here. So. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, what about the other ghosts? So we got you know the Chris- ghosts of Christmas past. We got uh, present and, and uh, yet to come. Who, who are in those roles? Felicia Curry plays the ghost of Christmas past. Uh, she's incredible once again. Her entrance is breathtaking, and you know we don't want to give away exactly what happens, but uh, uh, let's just say that she's very, very magical. Yeah. And the ghost of uh, Christmas Present is Barbara Penalini, mm-hmm. and uh, her entrance is just joyous, absolutely <laughs> joyous, and huge, and big, and a whole lot of fun. She's also a new, new face. A new, yes, yes, yes. Awesome. And the ghost of Christmas yet to come. A lot of, <laughs> very, probably doesn't yes. say a lot. <laughs> yes, awesome. very, a very scary apparition. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, even scarier than Marley in some ways. Ooh, but, um, yeah, for sure. We, it, the, the progression of the ghosts definitely take a journey. Right. Now, uh, when you, speaking of those ghosts, when they, once they arrive and you're sort of, let's like, looking back on the events of your life, uh, you're sort of watching this young man play your younger self. How do you, do you, uh, did you guys have to like powwow ahead of time and work out, you know, the similar, similarities in the performance or do you kind of make it your own thing? Well, one of the joys for me having, having Craig here this year is, uh, is having the opportunity to sort of reinvestigate who young Scrooge is because I get to see what Craig brings to the role see all these new different takes, these new physicalities and things that I get to then sort of incorporate into my particular performance. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, we did have some opportunity during rehearsal to really sort of figure out together who Scrooge is. And I think it's great. I think we have some really fun new things and a, an interesting relationship as far as how that plays, as far as how Scrooge feels about his nephew and you know, maybe some... <laughs> How, how much the uh, Fred, the nephew, sort of mirrors young Scrooge in the past and how that might inform that sort of relationship. Yeah, definitely. The young, you know, with Fezziwig, he, he's a little, you know, he's a, he's a little jollier in his younger days and then he That's becomes right. crotchety. That's right. um, take me into sort of the how you as an actor sort of chart that arc because, you know, at first you have to be, you know, almost jaded with the whole world, so cynical, you know, penny pincher, and then you get the great moment by the end where you get to have the big uh, redemption, you know, the, the awakening moment. Um, is that is that your favorite part to play once you get to, to go, you know, <laughs> at the end? Or is there... Gee, what's I have it several for you? favorite parts. Okay. But um, I think what's great about the story is that the ghosts put a mirror up to Scrooge's face Mm -hmm. and things that he hadn't seen before he begins to see uh the 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 seeing bell and then breaking up with bell or having bell Mm -hmm. break up with him uh the life you've chosen (laughs) is yes it i mean that's that's actually part of what makes him who he is now Mm -hmm. that heartbreak that disappointment Mm -hmm. he wouldn't admit that but past puts it up to his face and he can't deny it and you know when he sees the Cratchits, he, in 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 my sort of journey of the play, he's never seen the Cratchit kids before. Uh, he doesn't know anything about them. Doesn't yeah. even know anything about Tiny Tim. He hasn't invested that much in yeah. Cratchit to know about his family. He just knows he's got a bunch of kids. Yeah. But to see them, to see how simple and meager they are, yeah. and how much they love each other, and they've got a child who's disabled, he's got to deal with that. And, you know, so through the progression of the play, he's constantly having to deal with things that he's never he's never addressed personally or he's never allowed himself to see. Yeah. There's a great scene where two of my debtors um, uh, are, they discover some happiness and they go off singing Deck the Halls. Mm. And I say, why are you showing me this? And Christmas Present says, because even in their meager life, they can find the joy of Christmas, the joy of the season. Yeah. And I think him, allowing himself to see those things brings him to the, the end where, you know, the end is, this is where you're headed. Yeah. Where you're headed is your name on a tombstone. Right. And so he's got to make a choice there. Yeah. Does he want to live or does he want to die? Dickens is a genius. <laughs> yeah, Charles yeah, Dickens, he's... man. Um, talk about how this, uh, to steal, I guess, a phrase from the play, 
how this show is a warning against ignorance and what? In our own lives, in, in audiences that come to the theater, how might they be transformed in that regard? Well, you know, as Craig was saying earlier, I mean, the show, the show is not only a mirror, I think, for Scrooge, but I think it can also be a mirror for audience members. You know, when it's very easy to become sort of self-involved and, and worry only about yourself without thinking about the community at large. And um, it's easy to become fearful and to, to hold on to what you have. And, and I think it's, it's, it, the show provides an opportunity for people to see that, you know, when you invest in your community and you invest in those around you, you can live a much fuller, happier life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I believe past years, aren't the, isn't the show usually attached to some sort of charity drive? Don't yes. you make an announcement at the end? Why don't you tell us about what that is? Uh, the group that we're partnered with this year is called Food and Friends. Okay. It's a local organization that provides meals and groceries to people with uh, life-challenging illnesses. Okay. Uh, it's a wonderful organization. They've been around since uh, about 1988, mm -hmm. I think is when they were first established. And then they, their main, main focus was on um, uh, people who were suffering with HIV and AIDS. And since then, they've grown significantly in their scope. Uh, they deal with men, women, and children who uh, have suffered from cancer, HIV, other sort of, um, like you said, life-challenging illnesses, and they provide uh, food and also uh, nutrition counseling for people to help them sort of figure out how to eat healthily for their own individual um, problems. Yeah, awesome. So you'll stand at the end and, and tell everyone how they can contribute and everything? So. Sure. Okay, definitely. Awesome. Um, before we go, I want to know, uh, do you guys have a favorite? Uh, Scrooge? Is it is it George C. Scott? Is it Alistair Sim? Or, you know, Ed Gero? <laughs> no, you can't say him. You can't say him. That's a cop-out. No, but, you know, which which one do you remember sort of growing up watching? Or, you know, which one sort of, you know... Well, the classic of... one, the Alistair one, is the one I grew up with. Yeah. And then the George C. Scott one came out, and I found that to be really fascinating. Yeah. Uh, just as an... I don't even think I was acting then when it first came out. Yeah. You know, I, I just found that take on it to be really fascinating. Yeah. I think Alistair Sim is my favorite. Well, that's the, <laughs> that scene where we all when, grew up with that, right? When yeah. Cratchit comes back in and, and uh, he, he he so Scrooge has already seen the light, but he's got to you know pretend that he you know put another coal on that uh, Cratchit and he, yeah, and then he starts giggling. It's so fantastic. Um, how about for you, sir? I'm kind, I'm kind of a Muppet fan. Myself, oh, Muppet, okay. Personally, <laughs> um, can't go wrong with the Muppets. Other than that, you know, I don't actually have a lot of experience with the other film productions of it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I know the source material pretty well, and I love this production. But, uh, yeah, he's your new favorite. He's always, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, it's so much fun. Um, you know, before we go, why don't you just, uh, you know, what's if our listeners have, have heard this and they say, uh, you know, maybe I've, I've seen it before, but that, that sounds interesting. I might want to get out there again. You know, what's, what's the final sell? Look in the camera and tell them why they should come. <laughs> <laughs> It's great, it's fun, it's joyous, uh, and it's fast. So please come out, share some Christmas cheer with us. I think you'll enjoy it. Awesome. Again, guys, it's uh, now through December 31st at Ford's Theater. So come check it out. Two hours with an intermission, recommended ages five and older. But, um, man, it's, it's so awesome. And it's part of the D.C. tradition now. So come check it out. <laughs>